Um, so before we get started today, um, I was uh, uh, talking to him this morning, um, drawing to Alex, geez, I could not think of his name. Um, and he uh, decided today or has been thinking about splitting off uh, a new section. So this that's listed now, which he has done, <laughs> uh, Tools of the Trade is a new section that actually comes before the chapter that we're working on um, or that we're going over today. So he recommended that we do, you know, go ahead and do today and then go back and do that section and then continue on. That section used to be chapter seven. So it would have, that whole section would have been next week as one chapter. Um, and so he just did a quick division of how he wants to split that up, um, which totally makes sense because then it like in chapter nine, we already kind of start touching on working in the terminal. And so um, anyway, so that's happening. I'll, I'll update our schedule and I'll update the notes and all that. But so, so next week, someone can take six um, and long along with this little, I think he has an intro. Yeah, so this intro plus six um, and we'll rework the schedule from there. Um, if you're going, you know, if you sign up for six and you are working through it and think, wow, this is like a tiny chapter, I'll take, I could do seven and maybe even eight as well. Uh, feel free to do that. And then also let's give him that feedback because he was like, I think I wanna split it, but I don't know for sure. So. That's what happened. Um, and then he's also, he was saying um, somewhere later in here, he might split into multiple chapters or maybe he already did that. I, I feel like that's probably already, yeah, I think he already split it. Oh, wait, it would be um, somewhere in here. I think like that got split into multiple chapters. So I'll, I'll check all that and realign it and make sure that we're up to date. Um, but so we are working on what is now chapter nine, getting started with the cloud. But when I worked on it earlier this week, it was chapter six. And uh, just to get into it, um, what I think we want to take away from this is recognize why we might and might not want to host services in the cloud. Um, and it, like reasons that you will hear that are not good reasons is part of that. Um, Differentiate between uh, IS, PS, and ZES. Uh, list some common cloud services, or I guess it's just PASS, not PS. Anyway, list some common cloud services, and then we're going to start and stop an EC2 instance on AWS. Uh, that that's the lab, basically. So, all right. Uh, he did have a, an overview for the entire section. And I just wanted to mention that um, he says, you know, like his purposes here is to help um, if you're a student who wants to host a project for portfolio purposes, if you wanna um, host a toy project or you're working at a company and you have no choice but to host things yourselves because you can't get the support to do that. And um, I have been two of those people in the last year um, and kinda I'm not a student, but I do also wanna host some uh, portfolio uh, projects. So all of this applies to me. Um, I guess before we get into far, like I guess we talked about it a little bit when he was here, but does anyone like I, I'm excited about this section? I feel like we all were. Does anyone have anything in particular that you're looking forward to in the AWS slash other cloud stuff section? All right, I'll just keep going. <laughs> all right. So why the cloud? Um and he talks about how you know you'll there are arguments about it being cheaper and it's probably not actually cheaper. Like if you actually spit, uh, set up your own servers, um, if you are going to take all the time to spin things up and down really, um, really well, number one, it's expensive to have people to set that up properly. And so you don't really end up saving a ton of money on that. But the difference is when you need a GPU for, um, a day, you can get that up right away. And so you don't have to wait for the new hardware to arrive to be installed. I I, I would push a, back a little bit that I think it is cheaper in those instances where I needed a GPU uh, four times a year, you know? And so it would be ridiculous to set up that server um, all the time. 
And so it can be cheaper for that. Um, it can certainly be cheaper for the hobbyist level of stuff where you're using free or close to free stuff, but still getting bursts of the higher levels. Um, but yeah, yeah, I I think that um, the I don't think that it's necessarily true to just say like it's cheaper versus not cheaper. I think it's I think the best like way to frame that is just to think of what you had in the last slide. Like, who are you and what are you doing? <laughs> Because like, yeah, yeah. If, if it was like, you know, if, if I was a first year undergrad or something and I had all these crazy student loans, like even running a, you know, $10 project would be like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's not worth it. But when your alternative is setting up uh, like your own server and, you know, managing that, that's not going to be cheaper. Like the only time right. it's really, it makes sense. I feel like the only time it makes sense to run your own servers anymore is if you're a gigantic company. Like otherwise, why have, why deal with that? Um, Speaking as a hobbyist who runs their own server, it will probably cost you more in the short and long run to build and run your own server than it will to pay like <laughs> five to $10 a month. <laughs> depending on where you're hitting like power levels like your power costs alone not including <laughs> hardware are gonna hit so yeah uh yeah so yeah i guess um i don't know there are cases where running your own server can make sense for things and it depends on exactly what is on the server and all that but if i don't know i like i definitely like the flexibility of spinning things up um i haven't used it personally uh much at all like i've poked at things on aws but i used it for work and so i want to get into um i don't know feeling confident to just spin things up to show people things and things like that so i think this will be uh nice for that um and then he he went through and he breaks down um, the types of uh, like things as a service. So there's the infrastructure as a service and uh, that's IaaS that he compared to just all the raw ingredients. So if you want to, the analogy is, or the metaphor that he uses is that you're, you want to make a cake. Um, infrastructure as a service is you're making it completely from scratch that you get all these pieces that you stitch together into your service. Uh, the next level was uh, platform as a service or pass which he compares to you get a uh, cake mix, but you're still like making the cake. You're, you're doing the work of, um, you know, making use of it. And then there's the software as a service level, uh, SAS, which is you get a sheet cake. Sure, you might decorate it yourself, but the, the whole thing is there. Um, do I have it broken down? Yes, well, kind of. Um, I don't have the good examples of the levels, but some common cloud services, uh, he goes into AWS, Azure, uh, Azure and uh, Google Cloud Platform. Um, and I guess it would be nice to have these, you know, this and this aligned a little bit better, um, but he just kind of listed out some of the things that the different services cover and, um, you know, how they compare. I did, I thought it was, um, I don't know, funny and true when he was talking about uh, a lot of things on AWS just get referred to by the abbreviation because the name doesn't actually mean anything um, in a lot of cases, or it kind of means something, but um, it's not real clear what it means um, versus the Azure and GCP names tend to be more, this is the what this thing does. Um, So, but yeah, so I, I have only, I guess I've barely looked at GCP. I've never looked at Azure and I've used AWS quite a bit. Does anyone have any experience with any of these or other things? Yeah, we had um, some experience with, um, with GCP and it's interesting. If you could go back to the previous slide. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so What's interesting is that this, I loved this analogy when I was going through it um, because you can sort of see how 
each of the different um, sort of needs of the different like kinds of people who are going to approach this are going to be met this way. Um, and I didn't understand this at all before I before I actually read this chapter. And so one thing that we used GCP for was um, platform as a service. It was really, really interesting because we had like they had their GUI and it was hosted by them and it was online on their servers. And so you could think of it just like as a random database, right? Like we were paying this vendor for a database. Right. Um, but because there are things that our lab needed to do that weren't provided by them, they like began with the end in mind in the sense that they they were like, yeah, they're the people that we're providing this service for are going to need more stuff. So they gave us the ability to like run our stuff and then they didn't run it to like, we gave them the code. And then they said, we're not going to run this code for you. We're just going to push it away to GCP. And you guys are going to get billed for that. And we're just going to skim a little profit off the top, which was a very interesting model, I think. Yeah. So in, in trying to work with them, that vendor, we had to learn GCP so that we could predict our own prices. That's funny. Yeah. Makes sense. Um. Yeah, I, I've done, I guess I've done more at the IAS and PAS or PASS level. So um, because the stuff I was working on, like the AWS, um, like pre-rolled solutions didn't meet with what we needed. Like it, they were too pre-rolled basically. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I mean, I don't know, I guess I didn't dig into a lot of it super deeply. So maybe, maybe they do, and maybe I'll learn more about that as we go. Um, I, but I've done a, you know, like I've, I've managed EC2s. I don't know that I've managed them well, <laughs> but I've used EC2. Um, and then I, I've done... I started to do work with uh, lambdas on um, AWS, the the function, you know, serverless. Which I like that he points out that that just means you don't deal with the server. It's not like it doesn't have a server. It's just that's not the part that you care about at that point. Um, so I don't know anything else on these uh, these levels. Yeah. Um... Yeah, in my case, uh, in my last company, I was um, I was managing, I think, uh, the big the big query, uh, which is which is in GCP, yeah, and uh, it it's it's just that also, uh, um, and uh, we just managed um, all the analytics uh, based code base on on uh, big query and GitHub, uh, and it was I I would think. Um, the company after I joined in, uh, they were converting or migrating from Redshift to um, to BigQuery because there is uh, some limitation in Redshift. Again, uh, AWS is um, some services uh, is is not like um, like it's not very usable enough yet. I I think it's they they are moving it now to uh, like evolve it now, but. Uh, at, at at that point, they they were not um, providing uh, the need um, for for the for their customer yet, and um, also the the uh, I think Redshift is more expensive than BigQuery back then. Don't know now what what is what is the difference, but um, that yeah. I was just gonna say that that comes up against one of the things that. Um, really aggravates me about AWS is they have like 14 different things that are about, you know, almost the same service. And I'm not sure, I don't think Redshift is the closest equivalent service at AWS to BigQuery, but I can't think of for sure what it, you know, like they've got, I don't know, multiple just database, data storage, data yeah. retrieval services. Yeah. 
And so I think part of the problem with AWS is knowing which one is what you need. Um, yeah. Even like like Lambda is um, their serverless, like fun deploy a function service, but there's also, I can't think of the names right now, but there are at least two other ones that are um, depending how automated you want it to be and how much uptime you want. And like Lambda has some um, spin up cost basically in time. If, if it hasn't been used yes. for a while, it, it's slow to come up. And then there's another one that is basically always on, but auto scales, but it's guaranteed like a minimum level. And so it won't, it'll never totally have to spin up. And then there's, I don't know, there are different levels of, it's still function as a service, but it's different types of function as a service. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is one of the, I mean, that's that's why there's a whole job of doing DevOps is yeah. part of why of that is even if you aren't, um, you know, running the server, you have to understand how it all stitches together and which services make sense. And I, you know, that I would say is the thing that I was lacking um, in the past is didn't really have anyone who knew what made sense for me. So I had to kind of figure it out because I was doing things that the company had never done. And so, the, you know, yeah, they weren't sure where to go. Uh, Novika, you have your hand up. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, actually the, the slide you had with the, uh, with the different services, I think, I think, um, Ahmed is right. It's uh, Redshift is the equivalent to, um, to to BigQuery, and then the RDS service is equivalent to Cloud SQL. Um, uh, okay, yeah, I could. I see mean, that. I don't know if this is I don't know if this is coming from the book, but if if it is, then it, it should be like they, maybe they should, should make an issue about it. <laughs> um, it is. That, so I think, yeah, I think it's interesting that. So maybe I maybe I, I didn't read a lot, but uh, just by looking at it right now, it doesn't really say anything about um, how our studio or how Postit is basically providing uh, a platform as a service as well, right? Because Shiny Apps uh, IO is basically a platform as a service. You don't really have to worry about deploying anything. It's quick. Um, right. Yeah, and then it goes there, and you don't even know what the servers are or how the Docker images go or anything like that. You just get a link that opens up uh, in the browser, and that's it. Yeah. Um, like he he briefly mentions, um, you know, Posit Cloud and Saturn Cloud as like specialized um, data science cloud services. Um, but I thought it was interesting, you know, given his position that he doesn't really um, spend a lot of time saying where the, the various posit slash our studio products kind of fit into this whole scheme. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. I haven't worked enough with Google to to know exactly where the lines are. And then, and to be honest, it's not like I've used every service at AWS either. So I just know there are a zillion of them. And so the alignment can be confusing. And then like new ones will come online and you're like, oh, okay. Isn't, you know, you read the description now. It's like, I thought that's what Redshift was. That's what is this new, what is the difference though? So that's something I've run into a lot with AWS. And I, I mean, I don't know. I, I would hope it's not the same in everywhere else, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's basically the same thing that they have new things that are just, oh, we're fo we, you know, we took this thing and we focused on this area of it and we call it a new service. Um, so, all right. Um, what else did I, and then, so that's basically the chapter, like, you know, he talks about some, um, you know, he talks about the naming and he goes through the different things. And then there's the lab. Um, did everyone do the lab or not? Okay. The lab is, it, it was um, not too bad. Uh, I uh, had never created a AWS account under R4DS, like specifically for R4DS. So I did that and then 
uh, did the basic setup uh, following along. Um, and, uh, you know, did, did all the things. Do we, I don't know, do you want to kind of go through it or what do we want to do? with this like i could i could pull up that window i guess and uh walk through a little bit i th i think that um since this is cohort one and this is recording i think mm -hmm. there's a lot of value in walking it through so that sure. you know for the next cohort or like should i do this? <laughs> should i not they can at least see what we did sure okay so i i will if say um i think so um <laughs> That's I want to scan back through what all we're doing. So I, you know, outside of what I'm going to show here, obviously I like set up the account and um, set up my login and all that. And I have already logged in in the other window. I mean, click click something to make sure that it's still logged in before. Okay, just because that's where I don't think anything would show up on screen, but the process of logging is the most likely to show problems or to show things that I don't want recorded. So, all right. Um, so I created a new account, um, and uh, let me switch over to the other window. And I have logged in, and I have gone to um, the EC2 service within um, Amazon, which oh, I think he, he gave a um, tip for searching, maybe not. Um, but yeah, that there are so many, so many Amazon services that uh, you wanna go through. And so even like going through the menu, it's like, what is EC2? I guess that's compute. Yeah, okay, it's compute. So <laughs> there's a little bit of work there to figure out where you're going. What, um, what and then- stories what i usually do is just type what i need in the search and it shows up i don't even click that. yeah like but like partly you have to know what you're looking for you know like okay i want a server um uh ec2 didn't show up so you know there's some not super fun things around navigating around uh aws um that's because and, the gc2 doesn't necessarily have to be a server right uh well okay true <laughs> um and, and yeah even so even compute um doesn't pull it up but um so yeah there's you know there's some work to do to find where you want to go but ec2 is a, the good starting point this is where we're gonna work with uh, basically from raw ingredients. Although mixed in here is people have, um, you know, given us recipes uh, or almost cake mixes that we can just pull up. And so um, we want to stand up an instance that we're going to use, um, trying to find where the, um, so yeah, we're gonna launch an instance and we'll do this from scratch. Um, we will do it, uh, you know, we'll name it the way he said. So uh, DevOps for Data Science Lab. Um, and we're going to choose an image. Yeah. Um, for the people in the back who may <laughs> not be clear, could you um, briefly talk about some of the um, the terms that you're using? Instances and standing up and- Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, uh, instance as is, uh, you know, it's as in an instance of an EC2. It's a, a um, the word that they use for something that you have uh, built on EC2. And then the thing that we're going to be building is a server. Um, and EC2 is uh, what? Uh, Elastic Cloud Compute, Elast Elastic Compute Cloud. I can't remember the order there because like you said, the abbreviations or the uh, full names, people don't necessarily know a lot on uh, some of the Amazon stuff. Um, and so uh, when I say stand up, I mean um, like create slash turn on an instance. And the idea with all of this stuff is that we can um, 
turn it on, and, er, like create and turn it on and then turn it off and destroy relatively easily. Um, I think we talked in an earlier chapter about, um, you know, we're gonna be creating uh, cattle, not pets, that we create a service, we create a server, um, an instance, and, you know, we can turn it off or we can destroy it. And the whole idea is you want it to be where, who cares? Like it, um, it shouldn't be, if you're doing everything right, it shouldn't be a huge problem if you lose uh, or if you have to, to, you know, start over basically. And so we're going to have uh, plans on how to do that. And part of how you do that is with uh, these images. We're going to start with a pre-built image for um, uh, the most, in this example, we're going to use the most basic Ubuntu uh, image. So I just type Ubuntu. And uh, we'll go ahead and go with this base one. It says it's free to your eligible, and that's important to what we're working on right now. So we'll do that. Um, and it's selected. Yes. Um, did that. Yes. So instance type T2 micro. We're going to leave that. That's a free tier uh, version. Oh, geez. I couldn't see where I had selected it. So yeah, it does have the images listed there. That this is this is what I choose chose. That's ready to go. The next, you know, the important part uh, for when you're doing something real is figuring out uh, what type of server or instance type you want. So what type of server? How many CPUs? How much RAM? Um, and then what family? And that's a whole thing unto itself that we're not really getting into yet. Here, he has a later chapter that talks about it. Um, for now, we're just taking the basic free tier version or free tier, free tier level. Um, there are tons of different families and some of them are optimized for more like RAM. Um, uh, some of them are GPU instances. Some of them are just insane. Like they have the uh, virtual machines. They're just gigantic. Um, so, you know, you wanna make sure you're using what you actually need. Um, all right, and so, and just a so, random uh, comment that is also yeah. using what you need is also a climate <laughs> concern because yes, it yes. costs a lot of climate money. Um, for sure, and that is definitely a thing. Um, you know, with all kinds of uh, like artificial intelligence work, that oh, it's no big deal. You can just you you know these machines are so easy. Except it's like you just. You're burning down a rainforest, an acre of rainforest a day, equivalent to uh, to run these things. So, be careful what you're doing. Uh, and oh. or, uh, you could like just monitor what you're doing. Yeah. No, before something right. happens. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's again something that I hope we'll get into a bit later. Is kind of seeing, um, are we actually using what we have, and like how to um, there are features within all these clouds for auto scaling to the level you want. Cause that is something, um, even after we set this up, if we go, oh, I don't, you know, micro is fine most of the time, but right now I need to do this big comp comp yeah, computation. So I'm gonna uh, take this instance that I have with all the stuff, you know, all the uh, storage I have attached to it and everything, but I just need it to be bigger. So I'm gonna uh, like re, um, whatever, rebuild it with a bigger machine. And you can do that with, with these cloud systems. You usually have to stop and then turn it back on, but um, equivalent, you can do that. Uh, the next thing is creating and or using a key pair. I already did this step because that's one that I don't necessarily want to do on camera. Um, and so this is, I have this key pair that I can use. I have the you know, I have the private key on my machine that I can use to log into this server um, from a command line, which we actually aren't even going to get into yet, but it's set up to do that. Um, I think we just used all the basics or all the defaults for everything else. Um, do, 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 do. Did the key pair, did the lab, downloaded it, use the defaults. Um, he talks about a little bit, just barely, um, that generally 
you're going to want. Um, so it, by default, it just has like the, the root, what is used for, um, you know, to launch the machine. You'll all awesome. Yeah. Often also want something else. So some, your own volume um, to, to do things with. So uh, we can create or add that. There are all these different options for um, what kind of a uh, uh, storage that we want, but. Um, Is it like an additional storage, like hard drive? Additional yes. Hard drive? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it points out here that um, we can get up to 30 gigabytes of um, EBS in his el uh, elastic block store, AKA storage, um, general purpose SSD or magnetic storage. Um, so we're gonna stay under 30. Um, but again, the point is that you can just kind of um, expand that as much as you need to. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll leave the file systems at the defaults. Um, and I can't remember if there's anything under advanced that is, there's probably nothing that we care about yet. Um, and at least not as, as far as we have been uh, taught through the book, there's nothing else to do. Um, I, I will say for this one that I'm going to um, uh, set up is I want to terminate, um, does it do it by, or can we say this? So, that... so we, if we, if we did this terminating, uh, if we if we let it stop when we we're trying to stop the the instance, it will still there, right? And we will um, cost money or yeah. So it doesn't cost much to still have it there, but it's it eventually can eat up all your uh, free credits and oh, get into actual yeah. money if you just have it stopped forever. Um, and so I, actually, I'm going to leave that as as it is, and I will show you how to make sure that you have cleaned everything out. Um, and so, yeah, that's it. No more, no, no more settings. Um, and so that's it. Like, so what we did here, I, I glossed it over a little bit, but I chose this image. Let me go back into the catalog and look um, to show you that there, there's this catalog that you can search through of what's called uh, AMIs, Amazon Machine Images. Um, there's just a marketplace of, uh, you know, at least hundreds. And this is where I've already searched for Ubuntu. So if I think if I don't search, it might show me, oops. Uh, yeah, there are, you know, 7,100 uh, AMIs in the marketplace, but if we actually search, we can limit it down. Amazon makes their own um, images, but then others also make these images. Some of them are free tier eligible, some are not. Some have, you know, rental of just, or not, I don't think it's rental, but I think you like, pay to uh, get access to that image. Um, I don't think I've ever actually used a paid image because um, I just take it from there and upgrade it, but um, yeah. And so I selected this one. It has, you know, it has its properties. We're going to focus on that more in later chapters, but for now I'm just using this first default uh, Ubuntu. Um, verified provider is a good thing to watch for and, you know, all that kind of thing. Make sure that you know whose image you're using. Um, so yeah, everything else is set up. I will launch. And so this is, I mean, it's really partitioning off a piece of a server for me. It's not uh, really creating a server, but it's as if it is. Um, so it has been launched. Um, and so if we go over to my instances, I've got this thing here. Um, we can see, well, I guess let's go ahead and just click on it. Um, and it is pending. So it's still, it's still like working on um, sorting it out, but it's, it is in the process of creating the server and it will take um, up to a minute or so for it to uh, actually be there. Um, but we're not, so that's as far as we're going to go within this chapter. Uh, we don't actually do anything with the server, but hey, we've created one. Um, and oh, and now it is running. Um, and so we could, you know, uh, SSH in and um, 
just use it as a uh, Linux machine. We could set it up to do all kinds of things. We can um, attach a uh, like a, a URL to it and uh, maybe put our Studio Cloud on it, for example. I think that's where we're going to be going soon with this. Um, or our Studio, not our Studio Cloud, but our Studio Server, um, where you can run our Studio on your own servers. Um, but yeah, that's the basic idea. So now I want to go ahead and clean up. I want to get rid of this thing. And so I am going to terminate this instance. Um, I could also uh, like change the settings on this thing. I could you know do all kinds of things with the server. I can connect to it. Um, and I want to um, so I can stop it. I could reboot it or I can terminate it. I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to go ahead and terminate and it's going to give me a little warning um, that the default action is that it's going to delete that root volume, but the other volume uh, will not be deleted. So anything that you had attached as far as storage, you know, normally you probably don't want to just delete the hard drive and lose everything that was on it. Um, so it and it you know it's going to walk me through that I can go to this uh, volume screen to actually delete it. So we'll do that in a second. But okay, terminate. It's gone. It's dead. That server no longer exists. Um, if we reload, I think it'll say like yeah, shutting down. But it it's in the process of going away. And over uh, it gave me the link to go to volumes, but this is just this tab down here, volumes, um, and. Uh, it's going to say in use for a little bit. So actually I want to wait until uh, it, yeah. So now it says volume state available and I want to uh, delete those. And it's going to make me type delete. That might give me an error. Uh, yeah, one of them was already in the process of being deleted, the one that was the root volume. And so it gives me an error saying, uh, no, I can't delete that because it was already being deleted. And that is something you will run into, I guess, with you know working with AWS is you say, hey, please do this. And then there is some time of things going between different machines and doing whatever that it's not, you know, you'll get these conflicts sometimes, no big deal. But the important thing is, you know, come over here in volumes, um, those hard drives sitting there, you know, that space is reserved for you. And so eventually that costs money, it costs almost nothing, but, uh, especially if you're doing this just on your own to learn, you probably don't want random uh, volumes just sitting there empty for years. Uh, there is always, uh, or not, there is, you know, common knowledge is that if you are not super careful with AWS, and even if you are super careful with AWS, it's easy for you to have a bill like you're like, I turned off everything at AWS. And so my bill this month was only 82 cents. And so, wait, why was there 82 cents? I have no idea. There's something still out there. And um, I hope to get a little better at finding, like I've only, again, only worked at AWS from inside a company where I didn't have access to see everything of, you know, uh, are there any little billing things that are hidden and still around? Um, but we had things where we had servers that were on from uh, someone who had left the company. Um, so yeah, we we had uh, someone left the company and had left a server on that nobody knew about, and no one like was no one realized that no one was responsible for it, basically. And we it was just sitting there costing money. Um, and so I ended up like saving money for the company by just digging through things that, it's like, hey, this sounds like it could be related to my stuff. Did people think it was? Because I have nothing to do with this. And they were like, oh, we're, you know, okay. Um, don't do that. <laughs> like, it's better to pay attention to these things. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's it. That That's the lab. That's this chapter. We create a server, we kill it. Uh, and he said to stop it, but uh, I don't have any use for it yet. So I want to actually kill it. And that's why I did terminate instead of just stop. Um, but yeah, that's it. Anyone have any thoughts? Uh, whatever. Um, 
Yeah, about the, the saving bills, I, I think I, I'm in the same situation. So um, basically, there is a service called Budget, I think, in, uh, in AWS. Yeah. You, can, you can search for it, um, um, where you can, um, like, having alarms uh, when something uh, more like 50% giving like uh, and giving it, uh, yeah, is this one. And city alarms when something goes out in certain budget, like um, $5 or $10. Yes. You, it send you an email or and call you and just to make sure that anything <laughs> not happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is something that um, like, regardless of what Alex walks us through next, I'm going to be setting up all the budget stuff myself on my own you know, on this account that I created, just to make sure that it isn't accidentally costing money. Um, since it is just purely hobbyist level, I, you know, I'm okay with spending a little bit every month on it, but I don't want it uh, to, to run away and um, surprise me. And so that yeah. is some of the stuff that you can set up for sure. They And they also have, I started to look at, um, they have this cost explorer, but so I recommend it. Evidently, everyone should go to the cost explorer because it has this note on it. Uh, not that note, it has a note um, here that I have to check back in 24 hours before it's ready to tell me anything. And so apparently click it so that it gets processing to tell you uh, what's going on with it. because. Um, it doesn't show me anything yet, uh, but this will, you know, obviously with nothing running, it's not, it shouldn't, like there's nothing to show, um, but it'll make sure, I guess it'll tell me where I'm spending money, where I could um, possibly save money. So that's interesting to, to see what's going on. So. Um, yeah. There's also a, another useful one, which is uh, yeah. CloudWatch, where you can yes. yeah, monitor your uh, services. And see what our uh, what resources are getting uh, running up and draining your finance. <laughs> <or something. laughs> and you know, again, uh, Amazon ha or AWS specifically has uh, eighteen things for anything that you want to do. Yeah. Um, CloudWatch, uh, I'll bet we'll go into this because this is not just about cost; it's about like any alerts that you want about different things and. Um, you know, lo logs and metrics, which we talked about in uh, an earlier chapter that you can set up all kinds of monitoring. Um, and so, you know, this would be good to see if you have something that you expect to um, be not really utilized much at all, and all of a sudden it's pegging, it'd be nice to know that. <laughs> and so uh, that's what this is all about. But yeah, I'm hoping we get to know um, at least enough <laughs> of Amazon, enough of AWS to kind of explore uh, something, you know, like there's that there's S3, which is the um, simple storage. What is the third S? Uh, scalable, no, no. That's simple just, storage service. Simple storage service. Okay, so yeah, it's, um, Object storage. So kind yeah, of. Th yeah, that's that's like um, like shared storage, um, and it's just it's really useful for you know having your model stored you know, on Amazon, for example, that you can call from other Amazon services. It's um, uh, the pins package works with S three or interfaces with S three, um, and does uh, like can help you set things up there. It's really useful. I have set up um, Amazon Lambda, which is again Lambda is where you just pro you set up the function that you can call from a web site. And so it's like an API server kind of. Although there's a separate thing that's aimed at specifically at APIs, but it would the it would um, use a model that was stored on S3, and um, it uses an image that's stored on the uh, image store, the Docker store within Amazon, there are all these different services um, that kind of link together. And that is, you know, all those different, like even when you're using the 
um, platform as a service, you're still also doing often doing some of the infrastructure as a service of calling out to S3, calling out to uh, some others, uh, just, uh, oh, the route 53 is the um, uh, like URL um, service within S or AWS. And so you use all these pieces, even when you're using the platform as a service stuff. So, um, all right. Well, that's all I've got. I, I like I said, I'm gonna update the uh, the the table of contents and the schedule based on the changes that he made today. Slash, um, if he hasn't made all the changes, he told me what he plans to make, so that'll be ready to go. Um, I don't remember if anybody is signed up for next week. Let's see. Um, so in in theory, Jack is signed up. He's not here, so I will ping him to make sure he's ready to go, but to let him know that actually it works out great because the chapter he was going to be taking is now section two. So um, some or, you know, we'll see how much of that we get through. Uh, we might end up pushing further into uh, the summer now, um, depending on how we want to split things up, but I think it's going to make sense. So we'll still just have hit, like, um, you know, I, I have it on the schedule that at the end of each section, we have a um, a chat with Alex. I guess I'll, I'll take a look. I haven't looked at how the divide is now, but so maybe after this command line section, we'll get him in to talk about just those three chapters and then we'll come back to this section. Um, but I'm personally hoping to kind of blow through the command line one pretty quick because the Amazon one, Amazon section is what I really want to get into, so. We'll see. So I guess the notes on that is more to come in the channel <laughs> as we figure things out. Um, we are on next week and then the week after that is the second Saturday. And so that'll be the project club. So. All right. I will see everyone next week then. Bye. Thank you, John. Sounds Thank good. you, John. Bye. Bye.